to talk you through the action in Chongsha, the second most successful nation in tournament history, taking on the sixth most successful, five-time champions and reigning silver medal holders, the Philippines, up against a team that reached five straight semi-finals until 2009. Jay Youngblood, superstar for Lebanon, driving inside towards the glass. First point to the quarter-final, go Lebanon's way. And Gabe Norwood. Pretty much always gets the toughest backcourt matchup for the Philippines, and he's on Youngblood. Here's Jason Castro. He's going to pull up for three. Castro, nothing but net. But if he can break even in that matchup tonight, that'll be a great result for Lebanon. Here is Castro. Going on to the right hand, then the left, using the right to finish. He brought his dancing shoes. Flash on that move. I mean, there's talk that he's not in great shape and whatever, but. How about the ability off balance? Got himself on a with the spin move. That one is right back in Filipino possession. De Campo. Looking to back in and go to work one way, then the other. Back out to Blatch. He's going to take on a three. And Blatch knocks it down. And that's downtown after four and a half minutes. Young blood. Feeds the ball inside to Haidar, he gets contact and he puts it in for a chance at a three-point play. That's just some really good execution. Pick and roll, simple basketball. They got the switch, so they go inside to the big man. You think Lebanon would be pretty happy with this start? They're getting things done, their defense has been good, but yet they're down by two and Castro on the move. Lightning fast from the blur to the rim. Blink and you'll miss it. Let's see if he starts getting disruptive defensively because when he's creating steals, he just gets out in the open court and he finishes with ease. Haidar, Arakji. To Balji to shoot the three. Blatch didn't get to him quick enough and Balji makes him pay. And that's where they can exploit Blatch. I think there needs to be some adjustments here from the Philippines on that ball screen. The guard is switching, ending up down low and Blatch outside. They need to do a quick switch to keep Blatch around the rim. De Campo into a waiver who tries to find Blatch. Able to gather it just about, shoots the mid ranger. And knocks it down. Andre Blatch, third down to five. Arachi trying the spin move again as his pocket picked. And there's the pass to Norwood who misses the jam. Castro picks it back up. And he's not going to make a mistake with that one. He said, if you're going to. And the Philippines look so dangerous every time in transition. Balji getting away from a Buevo and putting it in. A really good job there by Balji deep inside. It might have actually been Haidar who got the pin on the defender under the basket. It was effectively a screen for his man just to waltz in and shoot a layup. Castro pulls up for a three. How about that? With Haidar. Dark, dribbled the ball off his foot. Up against Pingris, able to grab it. Balji. Shot clock at five as Balji gets into the paint, hangs it over the top of the defense. Turn won't go. Things look very different without Castro out there on the floor. Balji gets Blatch up in the air, drives down the baseline and forces it in. Through a waiver. It takes some muscle to do that and a chance at a three point play. So far, High Dart and Balji Bal have just been exceptional. Within one, final minute of the quarter. Wayless moves it on, Abueva is going to shoot the three and he's going to answer back. If my records are correct, that's his first three-pointer of the tournament. What a time to hit it. And the Philippines have four. 
in the first quarter of Waver trying to come up with a steal and has to and a foul on Abdel Noor. And that's where the Philippines bench is dangerous. They're not a great half-court team, but they've got energy, they've got athleticism, and they've got to force some turnovers and then get down the court quick and capitalize. Amir Soud. Now Jay Youngblood moves it into the paint. Balji continues to do the business. Here is Terence Romeo. To the left hand, down the baseline and lays it in with the right. Just great the mistake from Saud. And it comes to Romeo, who catches it in a good position and puts it in on the move and gets the foul as well. And that was just smart play from Romeo. It's not something we said a lot about him early in the tournament. The out of bounds play broke down. He just curled all the way around and felt the contact is smart enough to finish. 30 seconds for Terence Romeo. So Youngblood knocked away by a waiver, and here comes Romeo behind the back, trying to get away from Ackle, finds a waiver, hesitation on the shot, and they will tip it in with Pingris. Mark Pingris, energy guy, and all of a sudden, just when it looked like the momentum was, Le was with Lebanon, Philippines have got their biggest lead of the game. The bench doing the business for the Philippines. Terence Romeo, the spark, with five points. Waver's made some big plays at both ends of the court, and Pingris with the touch to give them a nine-point lead. And what about the behind in the semi-finals? Haidar onto Youngblood. Youngblood slips on the court, and Waver all over him. And last possession, Abueva stole the ball, ended up with two points down the other end. This time, knocks it out of bounds in just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Stagger, stagger. Hoping to come up with the court here for Toss, then knocked away by Youngblood, and here come Lebanon. Abdel Noor finding a passage to the basket, and the piece is picked up by Hyde. Down in the half court, they're a little bit of inexperience in that situation, but in the open court. There, outstanding. Castro all the way through, open on three of eight. Here's Romeo to Castro. Now Blatch. Blatch looking to bundle his way through. What a pretty move. He's brought his dancing shoes too. He has won the four blue by him. An athletic finish from the big man. Youngblood. So he's moving it on to High Dark. Haidar to the baseline and puts it in off the window. Castro. Trapped by the double team, finds Blatch on the perimeter. Thought about the three, goes oh, inside boy. to hang in off the glass. Andre Blatch doing a bit of window shot. They start to drop. Living on in all sorts of trouble. So, and Wayla's got a tip on it. Is Haidar. Pingris might be a little dizzy. <laughs> what a move. Bow. Three off the mark. Youngblood grabs the rebound and Arachi will race down court. Youngblood puts it in. They can do with him really getting going. That doubles his tally. Again, that was created by the big man this time, Haidar. Running the floor hard and getting post position and just soaking up a defender to open up the driving lane. Blatch turns towards the baseline. Two of them on him. Trying to find a way out, make it three of them on him. And he picks up the foul after the Houdini move and beats the chest. The Filipino blood is pumping. Well, it's like trying to wrestle with a bear underneath there. Yeah, maybe he's not in prime condition, but that just adds more weight to the equation. Blatch unable to hit the foul shot, so it remains an eight-point game. Final minute and a half of the half. Young blood. This is it across to Haidar, who puts up the contested three, but gets it to go. Bounce afterwards. Here is Youngblood. Into Haidar, the hesitation and the foul. That's a tough foul. Dio Campo was caught in the air, but he wasn't going to give away a three-point play. Another chance. It's back to their starting lineups. Now Abdel Noor, Youngblood. Fires the pass into High Dark. 
with pinpoint precision. Philip away from Abueva, who's right back at him. Rakji put it away by Castro, showing him how it's done. And coming all the way, coast to coast to finish. Yeah, the best offense for the Philippines is Jason Castro getting a steal. He is so quick, and once he gets his hands on it, nobody's going to catch him. Had the freedom of Chongshi to... It was uh, Deo Campo that Baljee wanted a foul on. Norwood across to Blatch. Makes the long two, then will put it up. He is just so good when he finds his stroke. Moving in towards the basket, Castro is going to pull up for three, oh. and Castro nails the three. And the Filipino flourish continues, they're up by ten. Well, I mean, what can you do? We spoke about it earlier. This man, he can blow by you to the hole, so you're down low in your stance, and he just elevates and shoots it over. Castro to Norwood. That's Jason Castro again. Around the screen of Blanche, pulls up for the mid-ranger this time and knocks it down. He's like a machine at times. He's having a person. Two point guards that can create havoc at both ends of the floor. And let's see if they use... Yeah, look at that. The pass on to Norwood, who pulls the chain for a big flush. Yeah, we talked about using Blatch as a passer from that big post, and especially against the zone defense. Because he can shoot, the zone had to go to him, and it opened up the back door. So, from the outside, nails that one. You know he can do it. That's his socks open if he just waited for a couple of seconds. Blatch moving it on. So, Pingris, who hesitated, that should have put it in, able to grab his own rebound. Romeo. Norwood onto Blatch. Ooh, was hit hard by Youngblood. That looks like shoulder troubles for Andre Blatch. <laughs> straight away he went down, he didn't want to move it. He's popped it. I think he's popped this out of the socket. Oh, he's in real pain. We yeah, saw the ankle injury earlier in the tournament. They're trying to put that back in, if I'm not mistaken. He played on with that ankle injury and had a double-double. And then came back the following day to play in the big win over Iran. That's the margin. They can turn this into a grind. And I think they'll be every bit as comfortable as the Philippines in that style. Called to Abdel Noor, high catch. He gets contact and he puts it in. Chats at a three-point play for Ackle. Well, I know Coach Maddich didn't draw that one up. It was a broken play. But it was a smart cut to the basket by Abdul Noor. He saw that Romeo wasn't looking at him. He was just ball focused. So he got into the gap behind him and finished. They have tapped that out, but as they say, them's the breaks, and it's Lebanon with a chance to bring it back here. They could even get with, get it within four with a three-point ball. So he's certainly capable. This time, going to attack inside. Lightning fast move to the hoop. You just sense the crowd here getting behind Lebanon. They can see the charge coming. They feel they're the underdogs. And Saoud is taking them for a ride at the moment. Castro to Norwood. Here's Jason Castro again. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Castro's going to pull up for three and backs it in. Castro. I've done Nort out to high dart. Trapped and finding a way out down the baseline. So who got the mark, but tipped back in by Puzzle Balji. Who else but be Huge moment here for both teams. Can the Philippines get a good shot for Andre Blatch here? He's looked unstoppable at times. Blatch hands it to Romeo, who takes it on and nails the three. And there's some more of that Filipino flair. And this young man has just grown and grown as the tournament has worn on and the confidence of Andre Blatch at the crucial time to hand off. Youngblood grabs his own rebounds and then puts it in. Romeo to Norwood, final 30 seconds of the third. Romeo finding a way out back to Norwood again. Gamwela's going to drive towards the baseline. And flipped up and in by Deo Campo. Lightning fast. Some pressure here, trying to take the ball out of the guard's hands. 
offside. Balji puts it up Big and shot. puts it in. Basil Balji has been. Uh, and Balji hit jump shots in this final quarter to expose Blatch defensively. And way last to Andre Blatch. Across to Norwood, he's going to shoot another one. He puts it in this time. Gabe Norwood. Evan from the field. Saud going to take on another three pointer off the mark. Haidar trying to save it. Blatch back against Haidar. And picking up the pieces was Abdel Noor. And he allowed Blatch to recover in time to force the drive. Saud driving inside. Able to find Youngblood on the perimeter and he puts it in at the end of the shot clock. Reaching from out of position, just wanting to stop the fast break. And what about that from Youngblood? Period here for Lebanon with Youngblood out of the game. He didn't want to come out. But Coach Matic, he has been around a long time. He knows his man needs a quick burst before he gets back out there. How about the pace there from a rap G to the hoop? I'm talking about a quick burst. Great defense from Blatch. He was switched out onto Saou, but he didn't give him the space to get that lefty three-point shot going. There's Blatch again looking to attack and putting it in. 22 for Romeo. Driving down the baseline. Finds Castro, steps inside this time, gives it to Romeo. Hesitating on taking the shot. He's got a Ratchy all over him now. Romeo getting inside. How about that battle? Terence Romeo into double figures. This kid has just grown before our eyes. The composure then. He had a three-point shot. He said it's not the right one. I'm just going to take it inside. And so did Blatch with the soft touch. How about this finish? Speaking of soft touch, it's like a feather duster. Two hugely talented game now, Arakji. Youngblood. Cross to Arakji. He's going to shoot from the far side and put it in. Lebanon refused to let the Philippines get away. Just a real breakdown there from Jason Castro. One of the few mistakes he's made in tonight's game. Three and a half minutes. Blatch calling for it. Romeo says, I'm just going to shoot the three. And it bounces up over the top of the battle. Oh, and inexperienced that time from Romeo. Young Club was helping across this side of the floor. It meant uh, the Philippines had numbers on the weak side. He just didn't get it there. Young Blood. Abdel Noor with the crossover. Driving against Blatch. Blatch comes out on top. And after that last play, Tab Baldwin just motioning to his team to calm down, and Castro goes and gets the ball this time. He wants to run a set, see if they can get it inside. Here is Castro. One-on-one -on -one with Saoud. Castro to the hole, can't finish, but Pingris puts it in. What about Mark Pingris? He is just so willing to do what the team needs. He doesn't need a touch on a possession, but if there's an offensive rebound, you can bet he'll be there to get it. Saud takes it, fires the three, got hit. Looked like it was fouled. Romeo will come down, caught, rejected by Haidar, who slammed the door in his face. Haidar, he doesn't look like an athlete, but he is. How about that block shot? He came from a mile behind Romeo. Closed him down on the glass. Look at this. How about the timing? Blatch finding Castro. Final five seconds of the shot clock. Castro's going to pull up for three and nails. Jason Castro is the sniper and he's. They give it off to Youngblood, who isn't as good a three point shooter. Final two minutes and a 12 point Philippines lead now. Haidar, quick catch and shoot from the outside. Haidar answers back with a three. Well, we said they need some big plays. It's exactly what they need. I think, you know, with Blatch is looking to block shots under the rim at the moment. They need Haidar to at least hit one or two more jump shots to get him back into this game. This is his first one from the outside. He's got 16 points. Waver and towards Pingris. Pingris puts it up and puts it in, and everybody's stepping up for the Philippines. Talk about the dynamic duo, but there's been a number of other players make plays, and two big ones from Pingris. Youngblood gets the contact.
and will go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Lebanon trying to stay within touching distance. Well, they're making the plays at this end of the floor, but they've got to get a stop down the other end and not... The deficit is eight points, but there's only 80 seconds to play. It's a half-hearted trap so far. They really need to throw some caution to the wind. A waiver got one thought in mind as he drives to the hole. Out of bounds still, Philippines ball. And for me, I'd put Hunter Veras back into the ball game instead of Abueva. You've got to make good decisions in this part of the game, and Abueva just needed to run time off the clock in that situation. Pingris is coming up with some bent. Norwood grabs it, and the Philippines are closing in on the final four. It almost looks as if Lebanon have given up here. They've got to keep pressing, try and get a steal. There's still 50 seconds left. Norwood they're running those precious seconds off the clock. Blatch with one more pretty move to put the edge. Blatch to the bench, he gets a hero's welcome. Youngblood shoots from way outside. And Abueva grabs it. And Abueva certainly isn't going to slow things down. Drives all the way and backs it in. And then look at the celebration as well from him. Well, the Philippines threatened to blow this game out all night. It's taken them 39 minutes to do it. But finally, they've broken Lebanon's back. Here's High Dark. We'll put that one in for an easy two. Well, the Philippines were feeling it right from the start, you felt. They've played the game with flair. They've played the game to have some fun, but they've played the game with focus as well. And a 12-point victory will take them through to the semi-finals behind 25 points from Jason Castro, who hit five from downtown, as well as 24 points from Andre Blatch, the big two, combining for 49 points as the Philippines win it 82 to 70. Well, the Philippines, it wasn't quite the same slick performance they produced against Iran, but their individual talent was simply brilliant and they did enough getting those players into good situations where they could show off their skills. I think they're going to have to play a little bit 